OK, so now we have one of our sort of work in progress talks. So we offered some invites to give slightly shorter talks, so 20 minute talks this year to share work that people were doing that was perhaps a little bit different to the normal things and particularly for this theme of what we've been doing in the past year. So I'd like to introduce Russell Pearson, who is who studied organic and medicinal chemistry at the University of Dundee in Scotland, then moved to St Andrews to get his PhD and as a postdoc. Then he headed out to the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia as a visiting assistant professor of organic chemistry at Washington and Lee University, then came here to Kiel and he helped with the creation and launch of our School of Pharmacy. And that's where he's been for the past 15 years. Um, and he's now a senior lecturer and our, the director of education for the School of Pharmacy. And his research focuses on active learning approaches with a particular interest in problem based learning and peer instruction. OK, Ross, over to you. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. And thanks for the invite. And thanks for organising all of this as well. Um, so hello, everybody. Um, can I just start by saying how cool it is to see um, so many people from so many different places um, uh, at this meeting today. And um, can I also say, uh, Anna, that was a that was a great, great talk. And uh, as Catherine said, my presentation uh, comes at things from um, uh, quite a different angle, um, but, but hopefully um, of, of equal interest. OK, um, if it's OK with everyone, I'll I'll take questions at the end just uh, so that we don't disrupt uh, the flow. And uh, I'll start off by just giving you a little bit of background. So, um, so I teach a large portion of the year one and year two chemistry uh, to pharmacy students uh, here at Keele. And, and just so you, you all know and so you can sort of get the setting right um, here at Keele, we've been studying or our students have been studying almost entirely as, as distance learners um, since mid-March 2020. So, you know, there's a few exceptions to that um, with the essential lab work, um, but, but everything else has been done online. So I think it's useful uh, really to say that up front. OK, let me try and move through my slides. OK, so, um, yeah. About five years ago, I started this project called Project Ponder, and uh, this was in response to disengaged students in, in some teaching sessions. Uh, I'm sure we've all been in, in that situation, certainly as instructors, where, um, you know, you, you really want your students to engage. Um, maybe they're not asking many questions and then finally somebody does. And the question is, is any of this on the exam? Um, which obviously is, is a bit disheartening. Um, so I was in a, a session like this, and that's when I sort of started thinking, well, you know, I need to do things differently. And so, as I say, just over five years ago, I came up with this idea of Project Ponder. Uh, and the whole aim uh, was to really get students thinking uh, during their teaching sessions. So on the back of this, um, obviously the work's progressed over a number of years. The first four phases of that I've focused very much on problem based learning um, within my sessions using a whole variety of audience response systems. And, you know, I have to say that this has been uh, very well received. And, and on the back of this, um, we've had a number of different outputs and, and you can see these here. So this isn't the focus for today's talk, but if, if you are interested in, in PBL and audience response systems, then, then obviously please feel free to go and have a look at this work. Um, so in the summer of 2019, Project Ponder changed somewhat and the focus moved towards additional online resources. So, you know, I'll, I'll say it now that the tone of this was very fortuitous. Um, and obviously, all, all, all of this was done, all of the planning was done and, and put in place uh, um, be, before the, the COVID outbreak. Um, and this has now formed or did form phase five. Of Project Ponder. Um, so it was in that academic year 2019-2020, so it, it straddled the period where students were on campus, so before the pandemic, and then obviously uh, it, it also included the period where they were working um, um, as distance learners, so, so as lockdown learners. Um, on, the, on the back of this we were able to, to publish the work, so you see this publication here. Um, so, so this was uh, where we were using online uh, chemistry crossword puzzles 
prior to and during COVID-19 as, as revision aids. Um, and, and this featured in um, the, the special issue uh, that Jay Kamad uh, produced um, um, in response to COVID-19. I should probably point out here uh, a little bit of British terminology. So when we're talking about revision aids here, uh, so in this context, it refers to learning resources that help students when reviewing content already covered on a course in, in readiness uh, for formal assessment, such as an exam. Um, it was some American reviewers that pointed this out to me that, that not everybody will understand what you're talking about there. So, so revision aids in, in preparation or to help students be before their summative assessment. OK, so as you see on this side, there's, there's a crossword puzzle down. So we, we created lots of different ones for, for the students to attempt. OK, so that phase five work, um, what we were doing, what I, was, <coughs> I, was, I was providing the students with the crossword. So they were all being generated by myself and then they were being posted into um, the virtual learning environment as, as revision aids. Um, so during that um, very difficult year for everybody. Oh, not quite sure what's happened there, Catherine. <laughs> Let me, OK. Oh, someone ended my presentation. That is a problem with Teams. Yes, if anybody tries to take control of the session, um, <laughs> it will allow you to do so. Um, OK, just bear with me, folks. I'll, I'll get those sides back. I'll try and get them back. Uh, here we go. OK. Yes. OK, folks, hopefully you can see my slides again. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, we can see them. It's fine. Yeah, I think I think Catherine, someone took control. <laughs> no, no problem. Oh, OK, so so yes, um, phase five in that very difficult year that we all had to 2019, 2020. Um, so, so yes, I was providing these crosswords for them to work on. So the way we then evaluated this was in, in three different ways. Um, and the first of those was using um, exam performance or, or looking at exam performance. So, of course, this is a very busy slide, but what I want you to take from this side is, is the idea that um, we looked at an exam question that, that had been used two years previous and, and we slipped it into uh, the exam paper in 2019-20 just to compare performance between students who hadn't had these crosswords against students that had. And some may say, well, hang on a minute, you, you can't do that. Uh, you know, very different cohorts and all of the rest of it. Um, it's worth saying for our M Farm students, um, the the recruitment is is very strict in terms of grades and interview process. So in that way, we do feel that that we can compare one year to the next. Um, what we found was that the the average marks um, for that question actually were very similar. So the mean and median marks were, weren't significantly different. But what we did find. Um, was that more students were attempting the question. So it's worth saying at this point that this question was part of a section where students had a choice. Uh, they had to uh, answer three questions from four. So you'll see in 2017-18, without the, the crossword uh, puzzle revision aids, 44% of students chose that question, whereas it went up to 71 uh, when we introduced the puzzles. Um, so we would probably say there that the students felt more confident with with that particular content. And, and again, I should stress here because they're MFARM students, it's a fully integrated paper. So the other questions weren't necessarily on chemistry. So for them to pick the chemistry, uh, obviously that was the only ones where they'd had the crosswords uh, added. What we also found was that the best performing students perform much better, uh, again, with the crosswords um, than for the cohort that, that didn't have that. So that was the first take home uh, message that we got um, from our evaluation. Um, we, we then looked at um, student tracking. So we, do, we did the statistics tracking, uh, a number of views um, using the virtual learning environment uh, function. And what we found was 
there was an enormous 17,700 odd uh, views of these crosswords across the, the, the year one and the year two students. So I should have said out at the start there, um, for each year group, each year group had six crossword puzzles Im embedded with, within, within their learning. Uh, so these were, were well received and, and, and got many views. So it worked out as, as, as um, each student viewing each crossword at least three times. We could then explore study behaviour uh, using the um, statistics tracking. And what we found was the following. So in the first semester, so before the pandemic, um, we found there was a, a real clear structure. So students clearly had um, a, 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 a study behaviour pattern. So Wednesday was always the, the day where we had the most viewings. And obviously Wednesday afternoon is, is where we have no lectures and, and it's free for sport and, and other recreation activities. Least popular day, Saturday. And then the most common hour of study between 4 and 5 uh, p.m. Once we then went into lockdown, when we looked at how the students were behaving, then there was no general pattern at all. And, and as you see on the side here, the only spikes we saw were when um, we had our open book online exams. So they were using the, the crossword revision aids um, in the lead up to those examinations. OK, on this slide, again, it, it, there's obviously a lot of information here, but it's just to show that we were uh, also uh, getting student feedback from electronic questionnaires. And what we found was between the two year groups, the second years were viewing far more of the puzzles than the first years. And when we explored this a little further, what we found was that cohort participation was heavily influenced by when the crosswords were posted, um, the amount of subject matter that was covered by that crossword, but also the length of the crossword. So once we had more than 20 clues on the crossword, we, we saw that the number attempting it dropped a uh, quite significantly. As part of the electronic questionnaire work, we had um, some optional free text questions and, 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 and obviously we were able to gain some, some very useful feedback from that. And one, one message that came through loud and clear um, was that students missed peer instruction and, and felt isolated during the campus lockdown. So on the basis of this, we then go into phase six, which is the current academic year. So this is all uh, very new data that we're presenting now. Um, and, and so staying with the crossword theme, but now getting students to work in groups, remote groups, so working online to create their own crosswords um, as what we would describe as LSAs, so low stakes assessments. So each crossword just contributed a very small amount, around 1% towards their module mark. Uh, and then the idea was that they would share these crosswords with the rest of the cohort uh, so others could then solve them. So this is the work we've done uh, in, in the last uh, academic year. And the evaluation uh, using uh, sim similar methods that we've already described. So what was the inspiration for this? So if we look at um, the literature on, on chemistry crosswords, um, I think this slide is quite nice, it shows um, that this has been going on for quite some time. So we've got a 100 year span here and uh, I've just highlighted a, a few articles that I think are, are particularly nice. Um, so we'll see um, in, in the last um, 10 years or so, um, there's, there's been three very nice uh, pieces of work that have evaluated the uh, pedagogical benefits of crosswords. Um, uh, so so we've, we've got those listed uh, on here. Uh, but what I want to draw your attention to just very quickly are uh, three articles. So the first was by Ruth Van Fleet, who I think ahead of her time uh, back in 1925 was getting her students to produce their own crossword puzzles. So this was at, at Hollywood High School. And the incentive there instead of LSAs was that there was a cash prize for the best one. OK, but they were creating their own crosswords. So it was this active learning that was going on. If we fast forward to 1996, uh, Childers and then uh, Quarter kind of both suggested um, crossword tasks as collaborative tasks. So uh, creating and swapping crosswords uh, within groups. So these are the ideas we took uh, to create our remote student groups creating crosswords and, and of course the, the new element to it now is the fact that they were doing this remotely so they were doing it online. In terms of 
evaluation. Um, so here we see um, the student um, tracking on the uh, virtual learning environment. So, so this is just looking at one lecture. OK, so we've just we, we could have given loads of examples here. So we've just picked out one lecture. Uh, so you'll see the date that the, the session was delivered. And, and here we're just viewing um, how students access this or, or, or the frequency with which they accessed it uh, over a period of time. So these are the lecture slides. And what you'll see is obviously there's there's a there's a big rise um, when the session's delivered. And we also see an uptick uh, when we've got the online exams. But if we look in that middle section there, we also see this rise uh, in views. And that was uh, due to uh, or, or in line with when uh, we set the crossword task where they had to uh, create this crossword as part of a group. So you'll see between the date it was set and when it needed to be submitted, we, we saw this rise in, in views. So we would we would argue here that um, it, it's acted as a catalyst for greater uh, engagement. So that sorry, that was for year year two students. Just one example. If we look at year one, so what we've done here is we've summarised the situation right across year one, and we've 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 um, we've broken year one down into these five different topics that are covered a, a, a across the year. Um, so you'll see those running along the bottom of this graph here. Um, and then within each topic, of course, there would have been multiple lectures, problem classes and workshops. And what we've done is we've worked out the average uh, number of views for each set of slides for, or each recording for each of these sessions. So we've got uh, views per post in per student. And the thing that I'd like to draw your attention to here is that um, if, if we look at this and if we look at the three uh, more intensely shaded bars on this uh, bar chart, you'll see um, they, they, they represent the topics uh, where students were asked to create crosswords. So the two with the, the lighter shading, this is where they weren't asked to create the crosswords. So again, it suggests greater engagement for those where they've, they've had to do this task. Now, some may say, well, well maybe Maybe they also think that, that these topics are the most important ones and that's why they didn't focus on the others. I, I, I guess there is an argument for that as well. Um, but, but regardless, by embedding these, these tasks, the students have engaged more uh, with their lecture content and with the, the course content. Finally, uh, within the uh, statistics tracking, what we've got here um, is just one crossword. So what, and again, I'm going to pick many different examples. And what we see here is how the students have accessed uh, a crossword that, that I've posted for them um, on that virtual learning environment. And again, what you see are the big upticks around the time of the assessments, both for coursework submissions and for the online exam. So this really I think cements the idea that students were using these as 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 revision aids and, and clearly they must have been useful for some uh, when we look at the number of views of each. We also did some student uh, um, evaluations using electronic questionnaires. Um, so this was using Google Forms um, and, and we've got lots of, of results from this. I just want to focus finally on, on, on three um, three results that we've got from this. So the first one that we're looking at here uh, deals with um, the aspect of the crossword that they found to be the most helpful. Um, so when we look at this, um, there is a difference between the two year groups. Um, but as it says on the side here, what is interesting is that the most popular response from both cohorts uh, included the creative element of the task. Um, so, so clearly that's been a good addition uh, as part of phase six of, of our work. We also asked the students whether they would have completed these tasks had there been um, no credit attached. So in other words, if, 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 if they weren't low stakes assessments, would the students have engaged with it? And what we found was only a third of the students from, from both year groups uh, were confident they would have uh, <laughs> created the crosswords uh, had there been no credit attached to this. Um, so I think that clearly shows that the the having them as low stakes assessments worked and, and that students need that carrot uh, uh, for them to to engage with this. And then finally, we asked the students um, whether these group crossword tasks 
um, had promoted valuable virtual conversations, discussions. And again, what we found was that around a third of, of the students felt that the crosswords had promoted some form of, of, of peer interaction. So clearly that's 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 great for that for that third, uh, but it shows that other approaches are also needed alongside um, uh, this approach. Um, so that we can increase the amount of peer interaction, certainly when we're thinking about uh, students studying online. OK, Catherine, I'm nearly done there. Um, so just then in conclusion, what we have found certainly from um, the last two years, so from this crossword work across phases five and six, we found remote engagement and collaborative learning can be enhanced using these low tech and low cost active learning approaches. Um, looking towards the future and certainly following what we've learned during the, the pandemic, many higher education institutions, certainly within the UK, uh, are now looking to adopt a more permanent hybrid model of teaching. And I think, you know, uh, for this to be successful, um, we really need to expand the variety of, of interactive online methods that we use. Of course, this is just one that we're presenting today. Um, it shows that that one size doesn't fit all. Of course, we know we've got lots of different types of learner, and, and so we really need to 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 offer them a variety of online resources. Um, and and then I think what's really important, maybe that the, the main message to take is is that students really want to regain the peer and instructor interactions that they've missed during lockdown learning. I'll give you just one final result we, we've we've had from from our uh, electronic questionnaires. And it was a free text question asking students what they have missed the most during lockdown learning. And, and it was free text, optional response. Uh, we got 44 responses and 43 of them related to missing interactions between uh, with peers and, and with instructors. So, so clearly we have to focus in this area, not just from a pedagogical point of view, but also when we think in terms of student mental health and, and student uh, well-being as well. OK, um, I did have that slide earlier with lots of references on. Um, if you do want to look at any of those references, I have listed them here. Um, and then finally, I'd just like to thank you um, for your attention. Thank you very much, Ross. Um, can so I check you can... from there, Catherine? Um, so I can take questions. If it's easier, I can take them during the lunch break. Or alternatively, we've we've got the thirty minutes at the end of today. Uh, so whichever works best for you. So our next speaker had to pre-record their talk. So we have a couple of minutes. If anybody has questions, I can see a couple in the chat. So we've got one. Have you ever tried scoring the crosswords? Maybe even using peer marking. We've not. Um, so, so at the moment, we have quite a blunt marking scheme for this. Obviously, they are low stakes assessments. Um, we've not tried that, but th but that's a nice idea. I should probably say that the marks for the um, so so the LSA marks all come from the creation side rather than from the, the solving um, side of things. Um, but no, that that that's uh, that's a nice suggestion. We've we've not tried that. I should actually I'll also say once once I have marked them, I, I make them available on the virtual learning environment. So um, you know, our, our class sizes are around 130 students. So because they're working in groups of four to six, we end up with about 25, 26, 27 different crosswords. So I post them all and I have also tracked the views there. And what I find is students don't tend to look at those as much as the ones that 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 I upload what I would say is there's there's a big there's a big rise in views when they first go up but I think it's just students wanting to see if their crosswords been posted <laughs> if I'm honest rather than than wanting to to, to attempt uh, ones that the colleagues have done OK, then we have another question. Did you use any special software for students to collaboratively fill out the crosswords online? Good question. No, I didn't. Um, I, I think they're all more um, tech savvy than me. And so I didn't try and control that at all. I, I let them meet however they wanted to meet online. Um, 
and and that's and, and that seemed to work very well actually they formed their own groups as well um so, so that that solved a lot of problems uh, and work on my on my side um and then when it came to actually creating the tasks they all found free software so that, that you know they, they they could do that So I'm going to move on there. Thanks very much, Ross. Could I ask you just to keep unmuted for me while I screen share the video for the next speaker and you can tell me if the audio works OK? Yeah, let me stop sharing my presentation. That would be Thank useful. you. Stop presenting. There we go, Catherine. OK.